Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to a really quick video, at least I hope so. Um, this is my second, excuse me, my second attempt of recording this since I realized that the first recording took like 15, I think it was 20 minutes long for me to explain everything and to show you my settings should not take 20 minutes. I'm going to hope to get it under 10 minutes. Um, the first uh, minute will be just showing me the settings, showing you guys the settings, not showing me, showing you guys my settings and prepare it and then after that I'm gonna explain my settings if you guys care for that as well so my specs are in the description 9700k currently running at stock frequency um, I used to have it at 5 gigahertz but I realized I didn't really notice a big difference honestly and uh, it, this, your system is just much more stable if you don't overclock it so I went with um, I stuck with uh, stock for now we'll see if I change that again but for now it's stock um, if I do change it and I have changed it in a new video, you'll see me update my description and my specs. You'll see me change the frequency there. Anyways, um, running an RTX 3090 now, 4K, um, 32 gigs of RAM, and I'm now um, I used to record on the same PC. Now I'm recording on a separate PC. Um, specs are in the About Me tab. Um, if you want to know my streaming or slash recording PC specs, if you're interested in that as well. Anyways, let's get to it. I'll just show you the settings and uh, enjoy. Okay, so those are my add-ons. I'm gonna go and do a really quick, um, well, actually, I don't need to. You can see that my frame rate here with the FS Labs, a little bit of Ultimate Traffic Live, and here in Frankfurt is 35 in this direction, where, where there is obviously the autogen, the most of the autogen, and then 40, 40 looking in the other directions. There's pretty much only trees and stuff, so. I'm um, pretty decent FPS. Um, I'm thinking about turning off AI traffic once again because it's only annoying and FPS obviously goes down with it. So I'll have to, I'll have to see if I want to keep it in. Um, but yeah, for now, um, that's what it is. 40, 40 FPS here in Frankfurt. So it's not too bad. Plus we're not, plus the aircraft is also shut down. So I don't know. Call it what you will. I think it's pretty decent. So let's go to graphics and let me explain some of my settings. You can see 3090 running at 4K natively. Um, we're running four times MSAA, um, 4K textures and anisotropic filtering eight times. Um, the reason why I have eight times is because I did a comparison between eight times and 16 times and found that the difference between, um, at least visual wise, I didn't see a big difference. However, uh, I did see a little bit of performance difference. So I went with the eight times um, and I'm, I can't complain. Sim looks good. Eight times, I did not use super sampling because I don't see a, I do see a great improvement, but therefore the performance was much lower than when I used MSAA, and MSAA does a pretty good job already. Plus, uh, FS Labs does not recommend using super sampling. They, they recommend using MSAA for their product, so I'm just to keep it compatible. That's what I'll use as well. 4K textures for obvious reasons, because I have 24 gigs of VRAM now, and I can uh, you know, max out the texture quality, so I'm going to go and do that. Uh, next thing, everything here is pretty much just to, you know, um, this, uh, I was about to say something, but here, I want to start with scenery objects. Um, I do get a lot of performance hits, or I get a huge performance hits uh, with the scenery objects, but the reason I keep them as high as they are is because I want to, you know, have as much buildings and trees as I possibly can. It's just, I mean, we all want that, right? Obviously, in prepared, it's not optimized, not very well done. A lot of CPU uh, utilization, and uh, yeah, this is this. Anyways, prepared, anyways, is a very CPU intensive uh, application, so performance will not be good if you turn this up all the way. But I put it not on the highest, but one lower, and uh, you know, the scenery looks pretty good. Um, here, the real reason I have this to high and this to five meters is high is because um, I did not see a big difference uh, visual quality wise if I set this to max um, and even to ultra. So I kept it at high. Well, starting at high is when I, or starting lower than high is when I started to see um, some differences in quality. 
at least for me, that could have that could be different for other people. But for me, high was good, middle ground, and performance wise, good as well. Although I don't think I saw a big di performance difference. Tessellation factor, I did see the good visual uh, difference, but I did not see performance impact. So I kept it on ultra. And the same thing goes for texture resolution. Obviously, I want to go for the highest resolution, um, and that's why this is also ticked. I did not see a performance decrease as well. With the mess resolution, mess. My goodness, I can't talk. With the mesh resolution, uh, the reason I have five meters is because I know in the past I've had a bug or there has been a bug in uh, Australia V2 where if this is set above five meters that it could cause your sim to crash because of I think terrain.dll, something like that. Um, and I, I know I read, upon, I read up on this and they mentioned the mesh, res mesh resolution. So I once tried flying back to... Uh, Australia with this set to five meters and I never crashed then so since then I'm keeping it at five meters I know they recently put out or I wouldn't say recently but they have put out an update since um I don't know if it fixed this issue but honestly I don't want to test it and to be fair I did not see a big difference in five meters to one meter or two meters I didn't really care um water detail I don't um I don't okay there is a big difference I would say there's actually no difference in high medium and ultra if you're looking at the distance to me at least only once you're very close up which you're most of the time are not going to be especially if you're flying airliners um, only once you're really close up will you see a difference between high and medium and high and ultra ultra will give you those extra foam textures you know that um, are produced when waves clash together things like that that's what ultra will do to, for you high doesn't just improves the quality of the waves a little bit more um, but honestly, I don't, I didn't care too much about it since I don't really fly close to the ocean or close to water bodies or bodies of water. So, uh, I kept it in medium. Um, plus it, it does, I mean, especially going to ultra does kill your performance quite significantly. Um, even under 3090. So just keep that in mind. Res reflections is all, um, graphics card. And since the 3090 is never really maxed out. I don't have any performance loss using reflections and it makes the sim look nicer. So I use clouds was the most important thing for me. And if you're going to check vegetation or buildings, you must check terrain. Otherwise it looks like your reflections are floating in midair um, because you're missing the terrain reflection. So you, you would just see the vegetation like float. Um, and you won't, you wouldn't even see the terrain where the vegetation, you know, is on. And the same thing goes for buildings. So if you have any of these checked, you must have terrain checked. Uh, special effects, I never really uh, see special effects since, you know, I'm always in the cockpit and seeing, you know, your touchdown smoke or anything like that, I never see and I don't really care about, which is also a reason why I never buy the immersion packs from, um, what are they called, FSFX packages, I think, um, because I just, I will never, ever really see that action. Um, I, I like it, trust me, I like their products and they're really nice but I don't think they're worth it for my sake. I'm not a big, um, I mean, I like good visuals, but I don't see myself checking the outside of the aircraft every so often. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, now that I'm also running uh, the 30 or have the 3090, so I have a lot of VRAM headroom. I use enhanced atmosphere. I will say, I think it looks really good daytime. Only when it starts to go darker and nighttime is when it starts to look terrible. Reflections are just overkill. Um, night lighting is just way too bright, and I, I don't mean the the terrain lighting. I mean the overall lighting. Like, it looks like as if the, the sun was still out. Like that's how bright the night environment is. I don't know. Nvtex didn't even fix that, so I don't know. Um, that's the only time I don't like an enhanced atmosphere. I hope they fix that. But otherwise, I think a enhanced atmosphere is a really nice addition. A good start to make the sim look more realistic. I think also pretty self-explanatory. Obviously, I would want windshield effects, turbulence, th and thermal effects, and volume. All right. So for the lighting, um, there's a little bit something else. Um, well, um, because we are running enhanced atmosphere, HDR lighting is automatically turned on, and there's nothing I can really do about that. It is what it is. And uh, yeah, I'm running two times brightness, and now you're probably wondering that is very bright. Your sim doesn't look so bright, and that's because I use a few tweaks in the config file that makes the sim look a bit darker. Um, I've tweaked the exposure a little bit to try and make the nighttime darker than it is normally. Of course, that fails somewhat, and so uh, 
that requires me to put this brightness at two and kind of negates my tweaks a little bit but i don't know i have it so far i don't feel like it's changing it back anyway so that's what i have um, dynamic reflection set to high because at high is where you start to see clouds reflecting onto your uh, vehicle and that was my goal is to be able to uh, get clouds on the wings and so on and so forth if the pvr is done correctly which for airsoft they had definitely have done a good job on their a330 um gmdg have done a pretty good job as well only fs labs is where it's missing in my opinion at least on the wings on the on the uh engines and on the fuselage it's pretty well done it's just the wings that are not very reflective dynamic lighting is dynamic lighting is also very uh you have the system obviously you, you're going to turn this on because it makes it look that much better shadow quality and shadow draw distance i want this have i had wanted to have this at ultra um because i do care about shadows so i think i actually have the set to medium normally now that i think about it Hmm. Yeah, I think I normally have it set to medium. I'm going to set it to high just to have the balance. And the shadows, obviously, internal and external vehicle is basically your aircraft, so the exterior uh, casts and receives shadows and the internal as well, so the cockpit, that's important. Simulation objects is for airport. So if I want airport to cast and receive shadows, then that's what that is for, and I do want that. Vegetation buildings receive that is for the cloud texture. So, if uh, cloud texture, well, for the cloud shadows, if the clouds um, produce a shadow, that the shadow also is received via the vegetation buildings. Otherwise, the vegetation buildings may look like they're just sticking out or standing out of the terrain because they're not being, you know, being darkened by the cloud shadows. So, that's why I have this ticked on. And then clouds and terrain for some obvious reasons as well. All right. And the last thing is. Traffic, which here I have set to zero percent, so AI traffic is set to zero. However, um, I do use Ultimate Traffic Live occasionally, uh, like about fifty percent airline and five percent GA density or amount. That's those are all my settings um, for the new my new rig or for my current situation. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any suggestions or questions, please let me know, and uh, I'll go ahead and answer them. And thanks, and we'll see you in the next video. Peace.